In the previous video, we have seen low pass RC circuits frequency response. In this video, we're going to see its time response. In specific, we're going to see its square wave response. I've shown here the low pass RC circuit and its input square wave. Now we're going to see how this circuit responds to this input and produces output. Now let me take that this point is the reference where t is equal to 0 and it is shown here that the time period is t naught for the square waveform and the midpoint here is t naught by 2 and the peak value of the input is vm. Now at t is equal to 0 suddenly if a voltage of vm is applied across this rc circuit we know one thing that a capacitor cannot allow instantaneous changes in the voltages across it because we know the current flowing through a capacitor and voltage relationship across it which is given by this equation i is equal to c times dvc by dt if vc has to change instantaneously which means it's going to change suddenly like a step then the amount of current that has to flow to accommodate that would be infinite. Hence, a voltage across a capacitor cannot change instantaneously. And assuming that capacitor holds no charge to start with, which means the voltage across the capacitor will be zero, even though the input has changed, the voltage across the capacitor cannot change. Hence, it will start with zero. Now, let me show the output waveform with blue color. So the output voltage will be 0 at t equal to 0. Now as time progresses, the capacitor would get charged through resistor and the voltage across the capacitor which is nothing but the output voltage would increase. Now the rate at which the capacitor charges would depend on both R and C which means how fast it charges depends on R and C. But in fact, it also depends on how much time is given for the capacitor to charge, which is in this case, the pulse width, which is T naught by two. Now we can talk about how the output waveform will be depending on these parameters. So number one, that is depending on the RC values with respect to T naught by two. And in this case, we'll have two scenarios. Number one, when RC is very, very small compared to T naught by two. And the second case when RC is very, very greater than T naught by two. So let us first understand the first case where RC is very, very small compared to T naught by two. Now under this condition, we have to see the circuit for two cases. That is number one, when the time is in between zero and t naught by 2. In this case, it looks like that we have given a constant input suddenly at t equal to 0, almost like a unit step. And we know the unit step response of this circuit, which is a very standard one we see in control systems or networks or signals. That is v naught is equal to v m times 1 minus e power minus t over rc. So we are saying this was the equation seen for a unit step input response. But of course, this is valid from t equal to 0 to t equal to t naught by 2. Now, as we are assuming RC is very, very small compared to t naught by 2, what happens is at t is equal to t naught by 2, V naught will be equal to Vm times 1 minus e power minus t naught by 2 RC, where we assumed that RC is very, very small compared to T naught by two. The exponential would be a very, very small value. Hence, we can neglect that, which means we will have V naught is equal to Vm at T is equal to T naught by two, which means the voltage across the capacitor would increase exponentially and it would reach Vm before we hit the point t naught by 2. So let me represent that output waveform. It would be like this. And the voltage across the capacitor would be Vm at t is equal to t naught by 2. 
Now in this case, we have a very important term to define that is rise time, which is taken with the symbol tau suffix r. Rise time tells us the time taken by output to rise from 10% to 90% of final value. We know that the final value is Vm. So now in order to find this, let's say 10% of Vm is somewhere here, which means the corresponding time will be T0.1. Let's say this is 0.1 Vm and 90% of Vm is let's say here which will be 0.9 times Vm and this corresponding time we can call this T0.9. Now what rise time means is tau r is equal to T0.9 minus T corresponding to 10% of output. Now based on this equation we have we can compute what will be the values of T0.9 and T0.1. Now the output voltage corresponding to T0.9 will be equal to 0.9 Vm which is Vm times 1 minus e power minus of T0.9 over Rc. Vm, Vm cancel. We can write this equal to 1 minus 0.9 is 0.1 is equal to e power minus t 0.9 over rc. We can write t 0.9 is equal to rc ln of 1 over 0.1. Now similarly we can find this for t 0.1 which will be equal to 10% of the maximum value or the maximum output value is equal to substituting that in the equation we get Vm times 1 minus e power minus T 0.1 over Rc. Now Vm Vm cancel we get 1 minus 0 0.1 is 0 0.9 is equal to e power minus T 0.1 over Rc. So we can write T 0.1 T corresponding to 10% of the output value is equal to Rc ln of 1 over 0 0.9. Now the rise time is given by this equation which is T 0.9 Rc ln of 1 over 0 0.1 minus T 0.1 Rc ln of 1 over 0 0.9 which will be equal to Rc ln of 0.9 over 0.1 which is ln of 9 this is equal to 2.2 rc rise time is written as 2.2 rc and this can be written in terms of the fh the higher cutoff frequency for the low pass rc circuit where fh is given by 1 by 2 pi rc so hence rc can be written as 1 by 2 pi fh so hence it becomes 2.2 times 1 by 2 pi fh. This will be equal to 0 0.35 over fh. So let me put it here 0 0.35 over fh. This is one equation to keep in mind. Now let's look at the response of the RC circuit for the second half of the square wave which is in between T0 by 2 to capital T0. So let me take that case here where T is in between T0 by 2 and T0. Now to start with at T is equal to T0 by 2 the voltage across the capacitor was Vm. Now as T is greater than T0 by 2 at which point the input voltage is 0 which means the input is shorted. In that case the capacitor would have a discharge path through the resistor hence the voltage across the capacitor would decrease exponentially as we have just assumed that RC is very very small compared to T0 by 2. Now as the voltage across the capacitor decreases we have a point where it hits 90% of the final value and a point where it hits 10% of the final value. We define a term called fall time which tells us the time taken by the output waveform 
to fall from 90% of its final value to 10% of its final value. So this time is called the fall time, the difference between these two values. So that we will say is tau f, which is in fact, you can try and figure out what it will be and how it will be. This value is given by 2.2 RC, which is same as the rise time. Of course, it can be written in terms of FH, which is 0.35 over FH. And of course, we can draw the similar output waveform figure for the next pulses, which will look like this. Now, let's look at the second case, which is when RC is very, very greater than T0 by 2. We know that the input waveform was like this. Of course, as it is a periodic signal, it can be represented in terms of Fourier series, where this input waveform will have both AC component and DC components. For this linear circuit, we can do DC and AC analysis separately, where if we give DC at the input, the capacitor will be open, which means the DC component of the input will be equal to the DC component of the output waveform. And in fact, the DC component is nothing but the average value of the input waveform, which is equal to Vm times T0 by 2 plus 0 times T0 by 2 over the complete time period T0. This will be equal to Vm by 2, which means the average value of this waveform, which is in fact the DC component of this waveform will be like this. So which means V output DC will be equal to V input DC, which is Vm by 2. And we had the output voltage equation, which was given by Vm times 1 minus e power minus T over RC. Now, as we assumed, RC is very, very greater than T0 by 2, where we can say T0 by 2 over RC will be very, very less than 1, which means obviously if T is in between 0 and T0 by 2, in which case this equation is valid, obviously here T over RC will be obviously very, very less than 1. In that case, Let's take this assumption into this equation. We will get V0 is equal to Vm times 1 minus e power minus T by RC where T by RC is very, very less than 1. In that case, e power minus T by RC can be written as 1 minus T over RC. This can be rewritten as V0 is equal to Vm times 1, 1 cancel, we get T over RC, which means this equation indicates that the output voltage is going to be linear. So let's draw the output voltage, assuming that the initial voltage starting is zero here. It will increase linearly. And when T is equal to T0 by 2, which means V0 at T is equal to T by 2 will be Vm T0 over 2 RC. The output voltage would linearly increase and hit a point at T is equal to T0 by 2. That voltage is given by this value. And now when we go to the second half of the waveform where the capacitor would discharge, again it would be linear. And when we go to the next pulse, it will charge linearly, the waveform would look like this. But if we observe here that we have assumed that the capacitor is initially discharged, hence we started from zero. But as we move forward, that the capacitor would never discharge completely under this assumption. That's why there is a voltage across the capacitor going to the next cycle. Now in steady state, obviously, the waveform would look as if we don't see the first initial transition waveform so that we get a steady state waveform where the limits would be somewhere in between here as shown. 
In steady state, the average value is shown here, which is Vm by 2. That's the reason we tried finding it so that we can show the steady state waveform with the average value. Now we can make a statement by looking at this. That is, if Rc is very, very greater than T0 by 2, a low pass Rc circuit converts square wave into triangular wave, which means it behaves as an integrator. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe and thank you for watching.